This is Trophy Gold, The Black Worm of Brandonsford, part three, our final part. We were just discussing off camera um, what we're gonna be doing today because there are so many possibilities and there's no way to do all of it uh, today. <laughs> so let's just do a quick recap of what's hanging out in the world so that you all can make a more informed decision about what to do next. A few things. One thing not entertained by the module at all, but absolutely entertained by the dice results last time is that we have a person impersonating Alina and doing murders in Brandonsford. That it's unclear where that person is. It's unclear if they are still in the guise of Alina. We don't really know what's going on there, um, but it is something that you might all want to play with in terms of devil's bargains. I might leave it to you as a play group to decide how much you want to bring that into the story. Uh, if I find a good moment, to reintroduce that character, I will, but um, otherwise I can kind of let you all have sort of narrative ownership of that, I think, for a bit. Other things going on that were entertained by the module are, there's a few things. And you're currently in this uh, cabin of this alleged witch in the woods, which I will say, I can't remember who's in the, I think it's Horgast in there with her. Uh, I have to say, Horagus, you don't really get like a witchy vibe from her. She just seems like a kindly woman. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's no like, you know, like it's just like 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 so many historical witches, just a, a iconoclast woman who decided to live away from everybody and is now a witch, right? So um, that is sort of what's going on there. That said, um, you all did uh, manage to rob or otherwise take all of the stuff inside the, the pond where these nixie like Fay were. Um, Triss led them away and then you all took all the stuff. And it was a good haul too, uh, which I think we're still kind of in the middle of dividing up. Um, but that's where, that's where things stand at this exact moment. You know that one of your goblin companions lost Hogboon's ring of authority in the house of a giant, uh, which is, uh, just a little bit north of where you're at right now. The old lady will tell you that, no trouble. What are some other things going on? There is the issue of this priest who went to the Barrow Mound of Sir Brandon in order to uh, find his legendary sword to slay the dragon. Well, that's kind of a moot point now since you all killed the dragon last time. Uh, the dragon was some sort of transformed dwarf, as it turns out connecting up with a story about some dwarves who were um, pursuing treasure in a mine north of here. That mine is the same location as uh, what you where you believe there's some pirate treasure buried based off this map that you came to town with. So there's that's another little angle there. There's that original pirate treasure. Also, it's this mine uh, where these dwarves were at and went who have not been heard from since. One of them, it seems, is was the dragon. Um, and then there's this cave pointed out to you by that dying dwarf. There's also the fact that Hogboon is no longer in his lair. Uh, he has taken his forces and marched them out to try to find the, um, exile goblins or the on the run goblins. And so you could probably go like raid Hogboon's castle or camp or whatever, if you wanted to do that as well. We have some minor little story threads like the uh, the ongoing uh, attempt to uh, make a love connection between the blacksmith and the alchemist. That is a thing that's hanging out in the world. What are some other things? There are some other little minor town dramas that I don't think are really going to play into things anymore. Um, the main thing going on in town right now is just all the murders. So, yeah, that's kind of where things are at. Did we figure out where this treasure is going? Who's taking what? Yeah, that would probably be the best start. I'm fine with Horgus taking the bangle. Um, if nobody protests, I can take the scabbard. Well, you are the only one with the sword, so that kind, <laughs> kind of makes sense. Um, there's also the chest worth two gold, silver coins amounting to three gold. A box of palm leaf cigars worth one gold, and then the red leather gauntlet studded with the teeth and scales of a fearsome reptile worth one gold. Mm -hmm. um, each of those two treasures that we just named were each one, so two, three, four, five, six. They're two, three, 
There's nine gold worth of things total. If anybody wants to keep track of who's got what. I think we'd agreed the silver, we would just plow back into the hunt tokens that were spent to procure the uh procure the treasure in the first place. Can we do that? I think we did it like everyone who uh has oh, got spent it. one just at, yeah. Got it. Yeah. So everybody except Rebel would get just one raw gold of of silver from the the coins. That seems fair. Yeah. But then maybe that means Rebel should get something else, like the box or something, to compensate. Um, I don't want the the box necessarily because that would take like the amount of gold that I would get to three, and I'm the one who didn't spend hunt tokens. So like maybe yeah. the gauntlets, and then that would bring me to just like two gold worth of items. I'll take the scabbard and gauntlets. Sounds um, good. Cool. Um, those. So the coins are divided up. The gauntlets and the scabbard are spoken for. The bangles spoken for. Um, who's going to keep the magical chest? Bear in mind, if you keep this, if you don't sell it at the end, it increases your burdens by one. Just know that. So, um, Tris, do you have a preference of the chest versus the cigars? Um, or possibly, I think in character, the not. cigars would be what Tris would go for. Okay, I'll take the box then. You might have a rich patron that needs wowing with your <laughs> with a cigar. Uh, so sorted. And so now the question is: as a gr well, I I don't think I'm interested in further role playing the scene with the witch horror guest. She could have helped you with the dragon, and she could have helped you with the Nixies, but you both but you've taken care of those two issues, and so she will tell you, however, about that in this large cottage there is in fact a giant that lives there she will she will convey that information to you she says he's grumpy not particularly dangerous unless raised to ire so but if there's something else you want to talk to her about by all means otherwise i feel pretty good with that scenario does she know anything about the mine or the pirate's treasure she does not no And so, um, yeah, what are we thinking for what to do next? Shall we put everybody together at this point? Um, maybe Tris might be joining you all a little later, but um, uh, let's just have the scene kind of post, uh, you know, maybe she's brought you in for tea and muffins or something, and now everything's kind of like, you know, getting a little, you know, the day is getting late and drowsy. Well, do we want to make camp somewhere or try to convince her to let us stay the night? Or do we just keep going? Well, nighttime's the perfect time to sneak up on a giant. Just saying. That's very true. <laughs> giant hasn't done anything to wrong us. It's also true, Revel, that the treasure was the reason we came here, and it's supposed to be pretty large. And I'm intrigued by this dragon that turned into a dwarf. So as much as our goblin friends, I promised them something, they've also tried to run away and sell us out at least five times. So I wouldn't feel particularly bad if we just left them here. That does sound like a, a a good little compromise. You didn't kill them and you let them go. I'm for one, I'm interested in what that dwarf was talking about. It seems there's a lot of unfinished business that he has with that. And uh, we'll find answers to it in the cave up north. But understand that's there's no promise of treasure up there. I am a geomancer. I do speak fluent cave. So if there is treasure to be found, I may be able to put us on the right path. That's fair. We should look at for that uh that pirate treasure though. That was the whole reason we came here. 
But if they're at least in the same general direction, maybe we can try and hit both. But I'm mostly like interested a, in hit. Sounds like a pretty good plan. Um, so skipping the giant then? And the goblins and the ring? And Hogboon? It's my vote, but I don't want to take it away from Horagas. That's 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 his B plot. <laughs> I th I think Horagas will tell the the goblins. Well, we we have other priorities right now, but if you come with us, you might find enough treasure to mollify your king so that he doesn't have you roasted on a fire, or fed to a pig, or some other cruel fate. They say. Hogboon is on the march. We are certainly going to we are going to stay with you because you are the dragon slayers. Well, not you specifically, but your companions are the dragon slayers. I subcontracted the dragon slaying. Indeed, indeed. Uh the goblins are okay with sticking by with you, for, you know, sticking by you for now. Uh they they certainly don't want to be out in the wild with Hogboon's forces looking for them. And so they view this as probably the safest option. Um uh Alina's not with us. Oh, Alina's back now. Uh Alina, it sounds like you're all heading toward the mine slash pirate treasure. That seems to be what's going on. So I think so. Tris waltzes in and says yeah. something like so what about this pirates? Indeed. I don't recommend you all stay at the house much longer because you did just rob all the Nixies next door. <laughs> so it might be worth it might be worth getting out of there before uh that situation comes to a head. And but as you're leaving though, the old woman, Vivian, she pulls you aside, horror guest, and she says. I want you to know that it's been so long since I've had a visitor and I really very much enjoyed your company. And I was, as you see, I end up traveling with all these young impetuous types. It's good to speak to someone wise in years and, and with, with, a, with a more mature perspective on the world. Have you ever considered settling down putting down roots well i've i've often imagined these things but uh i have a drive you see to 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 cure myself because i'm i'm sorry to tell you this vivian but i'm dying i'm slowly suffering from a curse that turns me to semi-precious stones deep within i've lost arms i've lost limbs to it and he shows his wooden arm he says this is a mannequin, not even my real arm. Uh, and you see, if I don't find the cure to Garlem's curse, I will turn into a pillar of stone, and then I wouldn't be able to put down roots anywhere except into the very earth itself. She says, well, you would at least have a very poetic end, don't you think? I've often thought that, you know, that I could turn into a beautiful statue of amber or or alabaster, but I, I like living. I like adventure. I'm, I'm not ready to turn into stone. And she, she says, ah, very well. Well, I wish you luck, horror guest. And if you have time on your way back, I am going to go visit a grove nearby, a grove of fawns. They have a particular tree that I like to tap from time to time. The sap makes a wonderful wine slash sedative. I, uh, I shall keep that in mind. And if I ever find myself free of my curse and I'm passing this way again, I will look you up. And that feels like a good and point for the Vivian uh, section. It is getting, it's not full night yet. You can probably go a little longer, but it is definitely, regardless, you don't, I don't think you want to, I don't think you want to hang out here, especially as the Nixies start to realize that their pond 
uh, is missing uh, all of the tributes. And so let's just proceed. If you follow the river, you will not go by, you will not go by the giant cottage. If you take the forest, if you don't follow the river, you cut through the forest instead, you'll get to the mine faster and you'll go by the giant cottage. So which way are we gonna go north? Following the river or cutting through the forest? If the point is to avoid the giant, then I think taking the river makes more sense. It might take a little longer, but yeah. That's one vote for the river. Or it's a stream, that, really. It's not a full river. That makes sense to me, too. Yeah. Then we the can't get lost, hopefully. <laughs> no, that's true, too. Yeah, like following the stream makes it easy to, you know, because if I mean, mines almost always connect up to moving bodies of water. So it makes it is it's almost certainly going to take you to the right spot. I think as you are going by the stream, there is a part where the tree coverage thins a little bit. And because the cottage is so big, you can't miss it. You do see it's far enough away to where you don't have to move with any particular stealth. You won't get noticed, but you can see the cottage. You can see that there is a fire lit. And you can see in silhouette an enormous looming figure inside lifting up a bag. The bag has someone kicking and struggling inside of it. Do you keep going? You can't do this to me. <laughs> Are you feeling particularly chivalric today, Revel? Does this, does this interfere with your precious morals? Wouldn't want to make a pact about anything, would we, Revel? Maybe we just get a closer look. For all we know, it's it it could be well deserved, whatever is in that bag, whatever fate it's being co-signed to. I think Haragast will turn to the goblins mm -hmm. and say, While my foolish friend strikes the giant, if it eats him, you run in and get your ring. And we'll consider our agreement concluded. How's that for a bargain, Revel? The goblins all confer with each other and agree that they no longer understand the precise terms or boundaries of the agreement they have with you. But nevertheless, they nod their heads. Alina, Triss, any thoughts on what we should be doing here? Well, last time we just got a closer look like it. It turned out okay. So there's no harm in that. We are the heroes. The song yeah. would be pretty rubbish, though, if we didn't actually go and look. I mean, yeah, like, I, I can see why Triss wouldn't want us to not go, because that'd be boring as hell. It will add another nice uh, verse. Another, another verse to the song, yeah. Well, so what's the plan here? Because the idea is to get a look without alerting the giant to your presence, and... Um, I'll put a set goal around it or just a goal. If you want to spend three tokens, I'll tell you straight away who's in that bag and you can safely learn this and then leave or help them as you wish. <sighs> I am not very sneaky. I am in scale mail and sneaking is not what Revel does. Maybe somebody else should go and do a little bit of light recon, but I'm I'm wondering if there is a way I can try and get like a better vantage point because it's night. Maybe there is a hill I can look down on or something of that nature. Mm, I think the cottage is the biggest thing in the area, right? Like, oh. um, I have an fact, idea. Your your initial trouble might be even like 
scaling the cottage to look inside, right? You, you may not be able to just like poke your head in a window. Right? If you Still... want to get a go advantage point, Revel, I could make the goblins translucent and send them in to get the ring uh, at the <laughs> same time, and we could stage a distraction somehow. Scaling the cottage, actually, I'm not terribly worried about. I have athletics, so if if that's the first hurdle. I am fully willing to jump that one. Um, I have a thought. I don't know if this will need to be said, but like my first thought is, you know, I, I smell the blood of an Englishman kind of giant. <laughs> yeah. So I've got some like some musk. So we might want to like disguise what we smell like if this is like a Jack and the Beanstalk kind of giant. And then also hopefully if the wind is not, still kind of angry with me then if we do send in the goblins i can strategically like blow something over and draw the giant's attention to them i think this is a pretty good plan disguising your smell probably is not a bad idea um certainly between i mean that would i mean I think that would probably let you get pretty close to the house if you just smell like woodland animals, right? The giant would have no reason to like, to be like suspicious of that, right? And then it's just a matter of maybe you can listen at the door and maybe learn what's happening there, or you can find some other way of gathering the information. But if you go ahead and erase the muscalina, if everyone agrees to that plan, I'll let you get up to the cottage, no trouble, as long as you give that up. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine doing that. And I've got my secret skill. So hopefully that can be helpful. I mean, we'll see if, 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 if we come to die rolls, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out then. But I think for now, this, I don't need a die roll here. This is good enough just to get close to the cottage. Once you're close to the cottage, what's your plan for figuring out what's going on in there? Um, I think, I think getting, cause these are like not airtight houses. So I think I'm going to try to get to where there's like a gap under the door and, and try to listen there. I like it. You can do a two die hunt roll. Okay. Um, and there it is. A four and a three. Uh, take your token. You are able to hear. The person inside the sack says, but you can't eat me. I'm on a, I am on a very important and noble mission. I have to go to the burial mound of the legendary hero and acquire his sword in order to slay the black worm. We all have an interest in that, don't we? And the giant responds with thunderous laughter, revealing to the captain the captured is presumably this is the priest uh revealing to them that the black worm is already destroyed therefore you no longer serve any practical purpose except to sate my hunger and it's a very imagine it in a very bassy booming voice right that's what's going on <laughs> I think while this is going on, I'd effectively like to use the invisible goblins as a piece of equipment to try and, like, scout out the interior of the cottage. I like it. It's a risk roll. Um, Adrian, what could go wrong here? <clears throat> um... Kind of thinking of the devil's bargain first somehow uh that the person in the sack gets free maybe yeah maybe but that also works like basically there's chaos ensues because the person in the that is being kept uh kept has been captured somehow gets free 
I think we have to make more of a complication there. I think it could be that in the scuffle, some of the goblins or all of the goblins get flattened by the giant. If you're okay with putting them in that danger, horror guest. Yeah, well, I mean, they're not going to get the ring otherwise, are they? I mean, <laughs> so the idea is Falcon. Yeah, very good. Um, okay, well, this is interesting. Um, I'll give you that first light die. Is the goal to get them to find the ring specifically? Yeah, yeah, okay. um, to find the ring. Cause, and then I guess it's up, we have to figure out if we want to stop this this priest from being eaten, but that's a separate final Separate thing. matter, that's I think, yeah. Um, okay, so the glass ritual will become transparent and nearly invisible, no ruin cost, and I guess you're going to transfer it to these goblins instead. Oh, that means I don't, I don't, my starting ruin isn't any higher, um, uh, for, oh, right, like, sure. yeah, for yeah, having because, it. So yeah, it's just because you learned ritual. it somewhere. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned it on a scroll, I think, in in an in an archive. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Um, okay, so you've got. Uh, let's do devil's bargains then. Um, devil's bargain. No matter what, at least one of the goblins won't make it, and you have to have a goblin funeral. I'll take other offers though. I do like that one, but at the same time, uh, oh, are you gonna make me covered? Are you gonna make I, this, me do it? I are think you? This, is oh, the, this is the only. Don't, oh, right. I don't hear any other offers. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> I got myself into this. I'm going to have to take, <laughs> take that devil's bargain. Two light, one dark. Let's see how it goes. Let's do it. Oh, not... I got a six dark. Hey, that's a full success. Uh, they will definitely get Hogboon's ring. Um, yeah, be thinking of the scene. I'm going to have you, James, narrate the 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 antics of the goblins as they go in to get the ring and what that all looks like but that's going to take a little bit of time alina tris rebel what are you doing in the meantime i think after hearing that um i'm going to try to like sneak a little bit back um to rebel and tris and and tell them what i just heard and say like so you know, it's he's not a bad guy. He didn't deserve it. We have to do something, right? Yeah, if it was me in that bag, I would certainly hope passing by adventures would try and break me out of this situation. You hear now thundering more loudly, mockingly almost. But what shall I do with you? Certainly, when it's all done, I will boil your bones for soup. That is something one should always do. Never let any part of the pig, so to speak, go to waste. Maybe we Ficacy, should... see, perhaps. <laughs> He's going on about potential menu options for this, this poor benighted brother. Maybe should, I should just challenge challenge him to a musical contest. Oh, challenge just, the giant. Yes. Mm. Challenge the giant to a musical contest or something like this. If you think that'll work, we did just play that same card on the Nixies and it seemed to do pretty well. Or oh, does the giant like cigars? Maybe we should bribe. Yeah, maybe we should bribe the giant. An interesting option. Everything seems we, to be we... going okay for the goblins, as best you can tell. They've snuck in. Give us that scene, James. So I think um, I got horror guest ruins gone up as well. So I'm gonna like build that in. Um, so I think they he, he sort of uses his ritual to. He, like touch each of them on the forehead and they like go translucent and he's like now my transparent friends it's time for you to achieve what you came here to do go get the ring and then you can go crawling back to your boss and hopefully he will spare your lives and um 
And then after they run off, he feels this weird tingling in his left fingertips, his non-wooden hand. And he notices all his fingernails have like turned like crystalline and his like fingertips and there's like crystalline veins on his left hand. He's like, not again. I'm going to end up with no arms. And I guess all we can hear is kind of um, the noise of them running around and, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> weird, like rustling. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, just as you're all coming up with your plan of what to do about Brother Dirk, uh, the goblins come back. They have Hog Boone's ring. It's it's actually the ring has like no intrinsic value. It has value just because it's recognized by this clan of goblins as the whoever wields it as the king of the goblins or whatever. But it's otherwise just a very simple thing made of tin and iron. But they come back. The transparency is worn off. You only see two of them of the three. Their heads are down in sadness. And as they approach you, the transparency of the third goblin who's being dragged behind gradually fades away. So first you see his little goblin foot and then the whole goblin legs and then his little goblin torso and hands but it kind of stops at the shoulder <laughs> there's nothing else to become transparent at that point <laughs> or, or, or to become translucent or visible at that point <sighs> and they say this is your fault I promised you survival but I didn't say it would be without cost, my friends. Because had you not retrieved the ring, you would all be dead. And that is a fact. But we shall honor your comrade in a suitable fashion. How do you how do you bury do you bury your dead? Do you cremate them? I I, I know <clears throat> I, I know many rites that could put him to rest. They say the proper way of dealing with our kind is we don't leave anything for the wolves. We must each consume a portion of Grey Lump until there is no more left. I was worried you were going to say that. Do, do I have to eat? And we Grey have Lump? to. As we consume Grey Lump, we have to share a good memory that will live with us forever. Just as part of Grey Lump is inside of us physically, so is his memory. I suppose, this is the proper since, way. I suppose since I was implicated in his death, I too should honor your people by participating in your custom. They look expectantly at the three of you. Don't look at me. That was this is all his idea. Although I will say that there is a seemingly a very hungry uh figure on the inside who might be willing to participate in this funeral with you. They they say but we snuck in to avoid getting the thing's attention. That's well, why was... we did all this. But well, that was before we needed a funeral where that's why Grey Lump's skull was pulverized like a grape in the press. And what better way to make amends? I think our guest is just going. <laughs> Alina, Triss, <laughs> the two goblins take their friend. And they sit down on a rock and they wait patiently while you all figure out what you're going to do and whether you're going to participate in their funeral rite. 
I think Chris is gonna improvise uh, some sort of goblin esque music as if that. But but I th think he's not sure if it's kind of like he remembers the right thing. He might have heard it some time ago, but I'm not sure. Like, try to do his best, but it might not be fully appropriate. And Tris, if you're just playing music, I think Alina would like try to make up a song about Gray Gray Lump, <laughs> like you know, just talking about how great he was and how we're gonna miss him and. Just try to, that's how she's going to honor him. <laughs> Revel, horror yep. guest. Revel will say, we'll honor your dead in our custom, which is just to say nice things about them, basically. <clears throat> they say, I will prefer the sacrificial rites. And he starts like superheating a rock to make like a fire. So they can put the oh, we even have like a cooking pot don't we like a special cooking pot. we do yeah we have revel's little treasure the the copper cooking pot oh that's great you all can like boil down gray lump while the giant is boiling down brother dirk and just make it a whole thing <laughs> out here in the giant's cottage <laughs> um i assume you're doing this away from the cottage yeah okay yeah go back out by the stream, say. I would still like to try and save the brother, though. Well, that's the thing. What about Brother Dirk? If you wait much longer, there's probably not going to be any Brother Dirk left. Wouldn't ask Revel to sacrifice his his chivalric intentions, so maybe maybe we should do that first. Um, if the giant is hungry, maybe I can like send like a waft of the scent of of gray lump toward the cottage and hope it brings the giant out is that a bad idea <laughs> something's cooking um as long as it that idea that. is coupled with then we go in while the giant's away and free brother and dirk free brother dirk yeah then yeah, yeah that's i'm the key yeah yeah and the giant might be drawn by the smell, might be drawn by the music. Um, there's all sorts of stuff that might cause the giant to come out there and investigate what's happening near his property. Um, I love all that. I think that's all great. I think whoever's going to go in to rescue Brother Dirk is doing the die roll with help rolls from the others as needed. So who's actually doing the rescuing? Is it you, Revel? I feel like it has to be. Very good. So um, could I... Uh, cast a ritual to kind of like also make like as a help or something because I do have the hospitality ritual which yeah, I is think, I think maintain that's... peace while you share food and drink yeah right? I, that's perfect for this scene actually yeah that's a that's a perfect uh, yeah so what is it, it says uh, maintain peace while you share food and drink that's perfect so yeah I think that would be a great like help die uh, for Revel so we'll let that be the help die if we need it and but Triss and Alina, since this was your idea, essentially, I'd like to just, let's just get this scene going before Revel sneaks off. Like, at the very least, the giant will come out and investigate and will engage in the magical hospitality. Um, what does that look like right now? Whoever wants to kick off the scene, please do. Um, I think while we're kind of starting this song, Tris and me, um, Alina pulls out that little pouch of herbs again and sprinkles a little bit and just like waves her hand and sends some of this smoke toward the giant's house to draw it out. I think Chris is playing like a very small bone flute that he kind of like took some rummaging through his pack to kind of take this out. And it doesn't look like Tris has played this flute, I picked this up somewhere and then it's kind of like trying to play this goblin-esque music on it. Um, it it gets better, but in the beginning it's it's not really, you know, uh, in tune and, and uh, but after a while he might have, I mean, he is kind of an experienced musician, right? So he, after a while he kind of finds his, his uh, rhythm with it. So 
Oh, there's a note in the chat about the copper pot uh, smelling like your favorite meal. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense for the giant. Like it, it smells like everyone's favorite meal. And the, the giant even like, like he comes out and he says, my goodness, imagine a more booming voice. Is that, is that braised babe of human? Yes, I think it is. <laughs> and he lumbers forward. It's so difficult these days to get your hands on a baby, a baby for the pot. That's what we were promised back in my day when I was younger. A human child in every pot it has been so long. Who has such tender morsels here? And he kind of comes into the encampment. The goblins are hiding. <laughs> and a little, a little bat wing ear floats to the top of the of the of the soup you might have to push that down uh, for a moment revel meanwhile you have control here of what you're doing so you can try to sneak in and grab brother dirk yeah i think um you know audience perspective wise they just see his blue eyes you know in the darkness as you know the giant goes towards the campsite and revel is moving in the opposite direction towards the the cottage and um either you know climbs in through the window or sneaks in under the door the crack in the door let's do the risk roll sure. um i think what could go wrong here is that your presence is simply the giant simply alerted to your presence and uh because he takes great big strides is able to catch up to you go back to the cottage really fast and you have to deal with him then um do you have a skill that will help you? Surprise or athletics are probably kind of the two I can think of. I think athletics makes here. sense. Yeah, in this in this context, especially especially if we're trying to do it quickly, right? Yeah. So that works for me, Cassidy. You can make a devil spark, if you want. I think no matter what. Um. I think no matter what the the priest tells you something cryptic about your drive I don't remember what it is off the top of my head let me check break the gash placed by the witch I think no matter what he knows the witch oh that's good yeah I gotta say yes to that yeah it's just two light dice for now go ahead sure That's a pair of deuces. So I think mm. I'm going to add a dark die and re-roll. Yeah. Well, yeah. unless you want to tell me what goes wrong what here. What would happen is the giant just like realizes the subterfuge and just lumbers back over to the What about the help? Stomp you out. There's a help, but you go got to add dark die first though. So Yeah, help only works if you if there's a dark die involved. Yeah, so okay. dark die in the roll. Yeah. So Revel, add a dark die and let's see how it goes. Two light, one dark. <laughs> That's a six dark. Okay, well, um, the help was purely fictional in this sense, uh, but that's okay. Um, full success. What's your rune going up to, though? Five. Five. Woof, woof. Um, uh, oh, gosh. I'm curious where the ruin's actually coming from. Like, what is happening to you? Hmm. It could be tied to the witch. Um, since that yeah, was the devil's that, bargain. Yeah, that, I think that's probably the right connection. All right. So I'll take the scene for a bit because I know what everything looks like. The cottage is three times the size of a normal house built from cyclopean rocks, according to the module. It's fitted with a tree bark door, a mud brick chimney, and a window. There is a fireplace roaring inside heating a giant cauldron scorched bottom rumbling lid uh there are actually chopped vegetables uh in on a nearby table and some have been put in the water and actually it's not a completely unpleasant smell the giant has a big chair 
<laughs> where do they make giant furniture? I don't know, but he's got a big cushy chair, according to this. Um, and you see that wriggling sack with Brother Dirk. I think I think Brother Dirk is talking to someone inside the sack. Can you hear me, madam? I know I should be praying to the sisters, but they have not answered my calls in all this time. And so now I send out imploring words to you Please, send me someone, one of your agents, one of your creatures. Send them to come free me from this horror, from this hell. And I will, I will discard my holy symbols and I will follow only you. But you don't know who he's speaking about necessarily, Revel. But you are the agent who has been sent, who is here to answer his prayers or his Im implorations. That's not a word. Um, what do you do? Even if Revel was to guess who he was speaking about, because I think he might have made a similar plea at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something um, the Witch of Navas does. She asks you to discard the sisters, right? Yeah. Yeah, or whatever holy symbol you, yeah. you attribute to. Mm -hmm. um, and either this is, you know, folklore that gets passed around of how you summon or how you you make this this bargain with the witch. And I like to think that Revel goes to the rig the well it's not really a wriggling bag anymore but the the shape of the bag clearly made by him and puts his sword up against the body itself and almost looks as if he's about to thrust it through the brother and, and then, then in the last second the voice goes, changes when you put the sword up to the body First, the body kind of twitches, spasms a little bit inside the bag, and then it goes still. And then Brother Dirk speaks with a different voice. I see you, revel. Alleged worm slayer. This brother is my creature now. You can save him bodily, but there is no hope of saving him spiritually. I have him just as I have you. Open the bag and let me look upon your face. And we stab the bag, but to the side of the body and tear down an opening so we can see Brother Dirk and he and she can see us. Let's take a five minute break. Um, we'll pick up the scene with Revel in a moment. I want to check in on this, on this, on this ritual, on the hospitality ritual, on the morning of the goblins. Um, we should talk about the giant a little bit. The giant is quite large. I would say he's probably um, sixteen feet tall. Apparently, um, he wears hide clothing, yellow-brown, homemade. And he actually has an enormous gold necklace around his neck. The gold necklace, fabulous treasure, if you were to get your hands on it. Um, 
very, very valuable. And he otherwise just looks like a very large, oversized old man. And he's got, for whatever reason, the pot has, the, the, the magical uh, food pot has also like convinced him that what he's eating is what he thinks he's eating, right? And as, um, as he chews one of, uh, one of Grey Lump's little forearms, the little hand sticking out of his mouth. As he chews it, he says, this is <clears throat> certainly the most leathery baby I've ever had, but it is nevertheless delicious. Perhaps but you honor, it... you honor your food. You honor, you honor the death of your food by eating it. Isn't that right? My goblin friends, doesn't he, isn't he a respectful guest? And the goblins feel really put out by all this because the goblin, because the giant killed their friend and is now eating their friend and no one is observing the proper funereal rites. And I think they're just like harumphing over in the corner, not having anything to do with you right now, horror guest. What's everyone else doing right now? Apart from, well, obviously Rebel, you're not in the scene, but everybody else. Um, um I yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I wasn't having anything super fabulous, just that Alina's kind of just oh, like there's a, there's goblins that want her to eat somebody, there's a giant, and she's just trying to like keep a low profile. I think after the meal, the giant definitely should go to sleep, which is another ritual that I have. Oh, this is very interesting to steal the to steal the necklace. I assume. Oh, yeah, very good. Uh, Horgus, what are you doing? Are you just trying to keep the goblins calm? I think I'll say Triss like making a meaningful look, and I'll be like, um, stroking my my beard, and and um, be like, well, let's sit down and be regaled with some music from the famous bard Triss. I'm sure that will soothe everyone's nerves, and then. And then we can sort this all out later. Revel, when you cut open the sack, you see Brother Dirk. Brother Dirk is, uh, I would describe him as lovely. He has um, beautiful porcelain skin, large kind of like dopey eyes, but no, but, uh, curly hair, very, uh, he just looks very like soft and pretty for a man. And he's looking at you and yet there is a look of undeniable cunning in his face right now. The part of him that's taken over by the Witch of Navask. He catches a bit of his reflection in your sword blade and he looks at himself and he's still on the ground and he says ah what a pretty thing this is what a lovely beautiful thing i should like to ruin something so beautiful as this and then brother dirk looks up at you and says you will never be free of me, Revel Worm Slayer. And Brother Dirk puts his hands on your sword and squeezes until blood is drawn from his palms, dribbling down. Brother Dirk is moving the tip of the blade toward himself. You will never be free of me. My dread gash will ensure that you will never know peace. And for all of your chivalric daring do, every noble act will taste like 
ash in your mouth. And Brother Dirk is now pulling the sword into his own chest unless you stop him. Yeah, I think I think we will try and and pull our sword back away. He resists. But not enough to stop you. His hands, his palms at least, are a ruined bloody mess. And he's just laughing in the tatters of the sack. Just laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> Aren't you going to ask him if he has some treasure he can pay you for your for your services with? To add to your little pile that you're going to use? You're going to use? As if money could possibly help you against my power. It cannot. You're probably right. It can't. It won't. And sooner or later, the forest will take me. And Revel will pull out a little ribbon, the kind that you might find in a little girl's hair. And he'll hold it up and he'll say, I can't save everyone. That's true. And I'll die trying. But Yulia made it. Maybe Dirk didn't. But others will. And maybe where I fall, roses will bloom. That's probably the best I can ask for at this point. And it's not enough to say I'm sorry, but I guess the roses will have to do. Now let him go. He slumps down unconscious. We just tuck the ribbon away and uh, I think we pick up Dirk. If he's not gonna be able to leave the house on his own accord, we'll have to at least carry him that far. Yeah, you can do that. Tris, do you want to make a risk roll to see if you can steal the necklace from the giant? I definitely want to see whether the giant will sleep with my sleep ritual, yes. Indeed. Um, Gonna okay. sing a nice lullaby. James, what could go wrong here? Um, I'm also going to suggest a help roll that I can make the stone under the pot get really warm so it becomes really soporific. Um, oh, good. The, yeah. the thing I think that could go wrong is that Hog Boone just turns up just as we're trying to pull this off and all hell breaks loose. <laughs> that would be bad, yeah. Um, sneak attack by Hog Boone. Uh, that could be a good devil's bargain too, actually. Uh, do you have a skill that will help you with this ritual, Triss? Or a piece of equipment? Uh, let's see. Um... Music. I guess I'll take it. And you're batting a thousand with devil's bargains today, Cassidy. Why don't you make the devil's bargain for this as well? Um, I think no matter what, oh, hmm. I think no matter what, with getting the giant to go to sleep, maybe it puts Alina to sleep too. <laughs> Very good. Um, I would like to just add a little twist to that and say that you fall asleep and get swapped out by the impersonator. What do you think, Adrian? I think I'm not going to take it. I think I'm going to see Let's see what the help can do. Um, should I also roll a dark die or just? No, just a light die for now. But I mean, okay. you can always add a dark die just because, but. Oh, sure. No, I'll just roll one light then. Let's see. 
A four. Hmm. The complication is going to be, um, oh, I like the, you hear Hog Boone's war drums in the distance as the complication. If you don't want to deal with that, you'll need to add the dark die and try again. Do we want to see the help? Oh, yeah, sorry, I have to do the dark. I'll do a dark, yeah, I'll try again with the dark. Uh, six dark. Okay. Um, My ruin goes up to five. <laughs> everyone's ruin is kind of topping out right now. Um, I I like it, though. You'll be able to get the necklace. It's very valuable, so it's worth doing. Um, let's just have the scene here. What's happening? Um, I think... Uh, Tris is kind of, kind of like putting away this goblin bone flute um, after kind of really, you know, kind of getting into it, but it it's not really the right instrument for like a, a actual uh, lullaby. And I think he does unpack, like packed in in leather and really beautiful, like uh, a very small violin. And then um, starts to play this this kind of mournful tune, um, but also sweet, uh, and um, and he sings with a surprisingly beautiful voice. I think, um, kind of standing up, walking over to to the giant and kind of playing for it, like, you know, looking at the giant, which is the giant kind of is peaceful, right? Like still enjoying the meal somehow and kind of playing for that audience. Um, just like kind of like a person doing hypnotics, right? Kind of like pushing them to fall over after a while. It's a lot of gold on that necklace. Do you all? relieve the giant of the necklace before sneaking off into the dark <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> like well that ended better than i expected gray lump has been honored the ring has been retrieved the priest has been saved and the necklace is ours i mean what what more could we hope for and then i think he looks at the goblins and they're all just like death staring at him i think Tris is kind of like seeing the goblins and just gives them like a whole coin, like a whole gold, like just gives it to them. Um, the necklace is worth four gold uh, in total, so quite yeah. valuable. Um, who's holding on to it before you divvy it up? Or presumably you'll sell it and divvy it up later. But who's, I just need to know who's holding on to it. It's quite big, so it's like going to be a, a hefty little bundle in someone's pack. Pity we can't we couldn't afford to keep it because it would make a pretty cool bandolier. Like, uh, <laughs> or August, do you want to carry it? I'll carry it. I have I, all my other clothes are made of metal, and I am a geomancer, so I can make it into a, a bandolier and put it over my shoulder. Very good. I, I, I do think I, I'm actually giving like, you know, some, I'm getting some kind of like really valuable, like gold, like some, like a big bag of silver and gold coins and so on. I'm just going to give it to like the goblins. Like you should be celebrating too. This has been a good day, a good day, a good night. And just like, you know, giving it to them. I think they'll go into a whole spiel about like the uselessness of human money because they're not allowed to come into human settlements to like barter and to trade. Uh, so like, what good does it have for them, <laughs> right? I think, I think Haragas loses his temper at this point and says, what will it take to make you happy? What's the best currency you could have? Being alive. Go, take the money, go to your king, give him the ring, don't die, and then live your goblin lives and be happy and remember Grey Lump and stop pestering us. Just go. Go now! And he starts capering and sort of rage at them. Says, "I'm sick of you. Get out of here!" It's like, it's like oh, it's like when you throw a rock at a dog to make it go away. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, I think they. I think as they're walking off, they're mumbling to you, or they're mumbling to themselves, or to each other, and you hear one of them say. I told you we could never be accepted by people like that. And then 
they walk off. <laughs> They're poor, dead goblin friend, but they do have the ring. And you have Brother Dirk, who will come to bandage his hands up, and he's very thankful for for the rescue. He kind of comes up to you quietly, Revel, as you're kind of marching in the dark here, and he says, "Could you? Were, were you? Were you sent by the sisters, or were you sent by?" Her. I don't think I was sent by anyone. Now, if I happen to be in the right place at the right time, and certain people know that I have those kinds of inclinations, that might have played into things. Says, well, in any case, I'm very thankful for however you came to find me. I have to I have to reach the barrow mound of Sir Brandon. I have to find this sword so I can slay the black worm. The I black don't believe worms, it's already dead. We killed it. And I'll show him the bezer from the dragon's gizzard. It says so, so the giant was not lying then. The beast truly is destroyed. Yes, we killed it, or we killed a black dragon, whether or not it's your villages. I don't know a whole lot of others, but this nothing is... seems to be what it seems in this in this village. Well, where are you going now? When the dragon died, it turned into a, a, a dwarf. And had a few dying words. Seemed to be it expressed some regrets about a, a cave up north. I'm heading that way to check out what it was because I think something happened to him to turn him into that. And maybe we'll get answers there. I don't know. Says, you probably should get back to Brandonsford. He says, yes, that's probably right. <clears throat> Very well. <clears throat> Thank you again. I don't know. If, Sorry, I don't go. know if you should really thank me. What you're going to find out in the coming days is that death might have been the preferable alternative. But you seem like a good sort. So you'll get used to this, whatever this is. Just whatever you try and do, try and help people. Best advice I can offer. He nods and he parts ways with you. He says, if I hurry, I can, I can, I can reach the village while there's still. <sighs> well, <clears throat> thank you again. And as he's hurrying off to get to the village, he stops. You can hear him no longer moving behind you. What do you do? I think we're going to gently clutch our heart a little bit and turn and look back one more time. He's just standing there with a too wide smile, a smile that reaches past his ears, with a mouth filled with too many teeth glimmering in the moonlight. And then he turns and goes on his way. And if this is one of my games, you'd roll the night move right now. That's not, so you're good. <laughs> I think that's like when the ruin increase happens. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. I've been kind of work. Uh, you, we earn that ruin increase, right? Yeah. Um, okay, good. We have an hour remaining in our play time. 
We have a couple of choices to make here. We can uh, press forward to the mine in the cave and then probably finish that up, uh, but we may not have time to do hard fire. If you're okay with the amount of treasure you have presently, we can go to hearth fire and, uh, and, um, and do that instead, but you will be, you know, light a bunch of potential treasure. Uh, if you go forward with the cave and get whatever's there, um, you can do hearth fire on your own, um, and, or like in chat or whatever, we can kind of do it, you know, in, in, in group chat or whatever as well. Um, it's really just going to depend on what we do, what we want to do with the rest of our time. Um, I have a meeting, a hard, I, no, it's not a hard, a hard stop, but I do have a meeting like 30 minutes after our end time. And so I can go a little longer, but not like a huge amount longer. Um, so what do we think? This is strictly out of character. I kind of vote for the cave, the mine, but I'm okay either way. As much as I would like Hearthfire in person, doing it in group chat is not the worst compromise the worst in the thing. world. No. So, yeah. yeah. I think it would be untrophy gold not to go for the gold. It just seems symbolically, hmm. it, it seems like we're disrespecting the game. Yeah. Although we did abandon an entire set in a Heart Hums in Darkness the entire last <laughs> set, but we were in an even worse yeah. state. We we were we were absolutely going to die. So yeah. that's also trophy god. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we are all at like ruin five as well. Yeah, so that's that other, is, yeah, you are that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, so. Alina's doing great. Maybe Alina goes to the cave and gets the gold <laughs> for us. Um, as long as people don't mind me taking a little bit of a more safe play in the cave, then I'm fine pushing into the cave. Yeah, same. All right, then we'll press forward. The mine is first, though. That's the first thing you'll run into. The mine is also the approximate location of the alleged pirate treasure. Um, it's not far from the cave, though. And indeed, you might even be able to see the entrance to the cave higher up in the mountains from where you're at the dwarves mine. The remains of a log cabin lie in a rotting heap at the base of a hill. In the hill itself, there is the old post and lentil entrance to a mine shaft, actually sealed shut by a cave in. What do you all do? I'm going to do my rock weirdo thing and talk to the ground and mm -hmm. find out where we go by carving some runes on the stone and talking to it. It's just about a perfect instance of that, I think, or use for that. Go ahead and make a two die hunt roll. Cool. I'm going to use my attunement to do that. All right. Uh, uh, four. Oh, finally, my curse is temporarily lifted. I'll give you a pretty good amount of information for a four. Uh, take your token. Um, The rocks will explain to you in their way the rocks will explain to you that the cave in killed one of the dwarf brothers who is currently buried in the cave in but the other brothers weren't around They will also tell you that the treasure that they found, they managed to remove from the mine and take it somewhere else. I'll relay that information to the others. So all the treasure's gone, you're saying? I think we need to find the other dwarves, but they're not here. So that must mean we have to go to the cave and find where they went. I agree. The The dwarf, the one that was a dragon, he said he killed them. He didn't want to share. So... 
I'm not a very smart man, but I think he was one of the survivors. He must have killed the other ones and either hid the gold or did something with it. Best I can think of. Mm -hmm. Heading up to the cave then? <laughs> yeah, the cave. Or do you want to, you saw, well, there's also the, there's the, there's the collapsed log cabin as well. I suppose there's there as well. I can poke around in the log cabin really quickly, I guess. Um, yeah, do a hunt roll. Why not? Okay. Um, it's a pretty small Athletics or surprise? So. Athletics for maybe will like help. Sip, sip athletics like will help a lot, yeah. So you can move, move wreckage and stuff, yeah, timbers sure. and stuff, yeah. Uh, that's a four. You get a token. You discovered that the log cabin is actually a blackened ruin because it was burnt down. And you discover inside the burned cabin a charred skeleton of a size that suggests it used to be a dwarf. Um, I'm going to go over there with you, Revel. And does does the charring look similar to the dragon trail that we followed? I'll give you that for free. Yes, it does. Okay. So how many of these brothers were there? That There's one in the mine, one here, one was the dragon. How many of them are there? Is there are there any living at this point? I don't know. Maybe we'll find answers in the cave. Wouldn't surprise me if there were seven of them. I feel like I read a story about that once. <clears throat> so it sounds like we're heading to the cave then. It's not much further from here. You can hike up a little ways up the mountain to get to the cave. Or it's actually up the hills to the base of a mountain. A lonely cave at the base of the mountains flanked by blackened trees. The darkness within is actually pierced by the sparkling gold and jewels piled inside. This is the place. What do you all do? First thing's going to be looking around, make sure there's nothing waiting to murder us the moment we step inside said cave how are you doing that i i can go peek in if you want okay i'll let you go peek in first <laughs> <laughs> but i'll Alina. be keeping a close eye what's your method here alina let's figure out what our die roll looks like um well i think i think she's gonna get her blowgun ready because it's quiet it's stealthy and just like have it ready in her hand and she's gonna kind of like almost army crawl that last little bit up to the entrance of the cave to to see it like is just to see it mm. make a two die hunt roll Ah, a three. You encounter something yeah. terrible. I think you're in a slightly more elevated position than the others, Alina. As you're going inside the cave, you catch over your shoulder a glimpse down the, down the mountain, down the hill. Hogboon's forces are marching up the hills they're going to they're going to be at your rear in no time but you can keep going into the cave and seeing what's there and it's a lot of treasure that much is pretty obvious even even with just the low light of the moon coming in you can see quite a lot of coinage piled up 
and gemstones and other valuables. More money than you've probably ever seen in your life. There's nothing here. And there's a lot of treasure, come on. Um, just to catch you up, James, since you were gone. Uh, it looks like the dragon burned down the cabin that one of his brothers was in and killed the dwarf brother in that cabin. And then the easy assumption is that he killed the other brother with the cave in. And um, so that's sort of what we're kind of hinting at vis-a-vis -vis the dragon and kind of what happened there. The group decided to go ahead and go up to the base of the mountain from the hills to look inside the cave. Alina has spied all the treasure. The cave seems otherwise empty, Alina. Uh, but Hogboon is right behind you. <laughs> so uh, that's happening right now. What's everyone else doing? I think we got to go inside. Either do a smash and grab or set up defenses, one of the two, but it's going to be inside the cave. Very well. Then that is what we're doing. It's a lot of money. The coinage alone is probably enough to equal, in game terms, three gold for each of you. There is also um, a collection of six golden rings on a number of severed fingers, <laughs> um, maybe like former pirate, pirate captains or something. Um, each of those rings uh, is worth one gold a piece. There's a set of garnet earrings worth one gold, a skull with ruby eyes and a rainbow of gemstone teeth worth two gold, an enormous diamond worth an incredible amount of money, and a jeweled cutlass, a fabulous score. Goblin army at your back. This is a big score, but how are you getting out of here with it? Didn't we just learn they don't care about human currency? Those those <laughs> ones didn't care about human currency. Hogboon <laughs> might care about it. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, I know what we should do. So my symbolic idea is we should try and make the noise of the black dragon and then amplify it with the instrument, with Triss's instrument. And then, like, try and make a really loud dragon noise so that they think the dragon's still there. Oh, like the rumors they heard were false. Yeah, the rumors of its death. Oh, that's very interesting. That's an interesting plan. I like it. Do we have rituals or items that would be helpful in this regard? Here's an interesting question. Do we have a set goal? I'll give you a set goal. Three hunt tokens lets you three hunt tokens lets you pull this off. We do have that's, three hunt tokens. That is also a bargain. Given that's, that's, a, that's a bargain. Yeah. Just, that's yeah. that's I almost feel like that might be cheesing the system a little bit, but <laughs> considering you we know you're a five ruin though, so I mean I think this is the time to do it. I'm fully feel, willing I, to put a hunt token. I feel in. like oh, yeah. this this is what Jesse had in mind with mm. like solving the set because you have to go through all that BS to get the tokens in the first place. So <laughs> I'm I'm in. <laughs> so it sounds like we have three tokens here. I think I just want the scene in montage. Then uh, let's take a five minute break. Think about your montage. Basically scaring away the goblin army is essentially what this is going to be everybody think about the role that you play in it what that's going to look like and we'll come back and we might actually have time to do hearth fire so we'll see how we do um, yeah. we'll come back in five
That was a very profitable resolution. I think we're still recording, but I think that was that was my favorite hunt roll resolution ever to, to my fellow players and those those listening in. <laughs> yeah. Remember kids, three hunt tokens. I am kind of curious what Revel is. Technically, Hum would work here. Goblins are inhuman intelligences. I think we should combine our efforts to make a really convincing Black Dragon um, simulation. I have Obscure. Maybe that's helpful at some point. I like the idea of all of us just like making use of our rituals, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know why in this case exactly it's like we all succeed at them versus the normal, you know, dark die ruin probably <laughs> goes up. Like if we used four rituals individually, <laughs> somebody's ruin would increase. The power of friendship, you know? <laughs> oh my God. Yes. <laughs> This is where the story gaming inspired bit of uh, trophy comes in. It's all about the tale. And mm -hmm. then Tris can make an awesome song about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you added your Worm Slayer title to your Zoom name. I like that. Yeah. I also changed it in the Character Keeper. I feel like when the Witch of Navas calls you Revel Worm Slayer, you kind of got to honor that. <laughs> she was saying it mockingly, though. <laughs> Even though you did uh, slay a worm. <laughs> like... It's your kenning, like how the... the Norse had like kennings, like Bluetooth or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's the mockingness, the, the mockingness is kind oh, I never of stopped recording. Oh, that's true. Okay. Oh, so I guess we've been recording the whole time. So sorry if you're watching the video. Hopefully nobody said anything untoward. No, we were we were talking <laughs> exclusively about the game the whole time. Yeah, very good. Um, well, let's. Well, what have we come up with then? Let's um, let's do the thing. Uh, how does this scene kick off to scare away the goblin army? I know how to start it off. I'm going to use my um, brimstone ritual and my geomancy to create a great rumbling in the earth as the, the, the prelude to this. Oh, that's good. Put them on edge. Yeah, good. Good start. I think Revel's hum ritual, since the goblins are technically in human intelligences, would come to play here. And maybe somebody else can assist him with like the boominess of it, but he is going to mimic the sort of uh, imitation of a, a, a dragon, or at least the goblin's idea of a dragon, and go, who disturbs, who approaches with war drums, and who comes calling, I will flay them, I will burn them, I will roast them, and turn them into a stew. I love it. It's great. Tris, Alina, um, how are you contributing? To help out with that booming of the voice, I think that Alina is going to like direct your voice with the wind to like resonate through the cave so that it just really booms out of there. And I'll oh. use my brimstone ritual to make a sort of sinister glow come out of the cave. <laughs> Very good. Um... I think uh, Trist uh, is gonna uh, use emulate to um, become a uh, living fire. Oh, emulate and Good. scare them away. Oh, so you actually like 
you actually, or, or, or maybe you, you know, I like it if you like running out like you're on fire, like ah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> the stunt man, <laughs> yeah, the stunt man move. It's good. I love it. Uh, the goblins. They. I think they, I'm gonna call yeah. like I'm gonna scream like, "It's a dragon! It set me on fire!" <laughs> I love it. Run. That's fantastic. Yeah, because Emulate lets you engulf your body in fire. That's a great use of it. So, yeah, the illusion is complete and 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 successful. The goblins think better of it. They turn around. Uh, they even, with haste, they, they flee, giving you access to the treasure. I think I would like a little bit of a, just a tiny epilogue to memorialize your exit from Brandonsford in this area. I'm particularly curious like about Alina and the fact that there's this imposter going around and what that means for Alina, maybe something with Vivian, maybe something else. I don't know, brother Dirk, but I'd like everyone just to give me a little bit of a, a little, a little epilogue for their character in this, in this adventure. Uh, first person to think of something can go ahead and speak. I think Chris is going back to the tavern from the beginning and um, where there was the dagger in the wall, right? Um, and I think, um, I think he's gonna take the dagger and he's gonna replace, like he's gonna replace it by hanging this violin that he played on the wall there and telling the um, the innkeeper, um, if uh, you ever have need of the heroes of Brandon's Fort again, play this violin. I will hear it. He claims. He claims. Very nice. Thank you. That's very like Frederick Barbarossa waiting beneath the mountain for someone to call for him. I think our guest's one is that the blacksmith, is it Warwick, comes into the 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 um the tavern and sits down and is looks around confused. And he has a note in his hand from the alchemist saying, "Meet me here," and then she comes in. And looks and has a note that also says, meet me here. And they sit down and they both look very confused, but start talking. And everyone else is just sitting, standing outside the window, looking in. And her guest just nods and looks very satisfied. And, um, and uh, yeah. Well, it's funny because Vivian was helping with that also. That actually didn't come up in the story. But in the module, Vivian was also trying to set the two of them up. Uh, I think Vivian has love on the brain. Um, so, mm. yeah. But in the romantic comedy cycle, the misunderstanding is yeah. over and the reconciliation takes place. Yes. Very good. Very good. I think Alina, she, she like lays low for a couple of days out in the, you know, in the woods outside of Brandonsford deciding whether or not she wants to try to go back like because she could just easily leave and just know that she's not welcome back but that it wouldn't probably affect her going forward but I think she she does go back and she goes to um the family of the person that that was killed um was it Reese or Reeve um Oh, that was just his title, the Reeve. Yeah. Oh, the Reeve. Yeah. So she goes to his family and and she she says, you know, the the truth, you know, that wasn't me. I don't know what it was, but it was something that looked like me and offers them some money to help with the burial. Um and leaves their judgment up to them. Fantastic. I mean, I don't think we I mean, obviously they're gonna, you know they'll come to terms with it, but yeah, we don't need to RP that out anymore. Revel? I'd love for Revel to like be able to verify her account because he's seen impersonators before and dealt with them. Um, 
but at the same time they weren't very happy when their dragon got slayed so maybe after a few days heads would cool but then i think as they're leaving town revel passes by the church and I would assume brother Dirk has to sort of be like packing up his bags because the witch's bargain was you have to rescind you all of your holy. Her, yeah. Yeah. Maybe actually since because revels Gesh was that he can't reenter the court of a sitting Royal um, brother Dirk says that he cannot enter any place holy to, you know, other gods or deities, particularly the sisters, but if other deities were to arise. Um, and so I think they just kind of like, walk together on the road for a while. But I think one of the things that Revel does is somewhere in the few days that he stays outside Brandonsford, he finds a green rose and just leaves it on the doorstep of the chapel before they leave. Nice. Let's uh, talk about treasure real quick before we take a little break before Hearthfire um, or to prepare for Hearthfire. Uh, the Dragon's Lair treasure, if you liquidate all the stuff just that's just coins and gems, it equals a total of five gold for each of you. Uh, which is quite a lot. And then it has, there's also the skull and the jeweled cutlass. Those are worth two gold a piece. The jeweled cutlass is magic. So if someone wants to sell that, they can, but it does increase your burdens if you keep it. Uh, post, it increases your burdens for the next adventure, not this one. Um, also, uh, so so I don't know who wants to keep the skull and the jeweled cutlass, but if you wanted to sell the skull, that's just two more gold for the pile. But the the cutlass is magic so uh what what do we want to do with those two things i'm fine selling i don't have a, a need for those or but i'm fine if someone else wants to keep them could i trade out my masterwork longsword for the jeweled cutlass and just keep the burdens the same you can keep the burdens the same well uh yeah, I guess so, because it's, yeah, I think that would, that would be fine. Yeah. Okay. Then if if no one else wants it, if no one else wants a, a magical melee weapon, <laughs> I I mean, the longsword's nice. It's masterwork, yeah. but it's... It's, it's, not, it's not Carmelo's Jeweled Cutlass, though. That's the name no, of the pirate. No. So, yeah. I will take it, then. Uh, does somebody want to keep the skull, or do we want to sell the skull? I feel like Harrogast would quite like a skull. I can trade it for some things worth some other other um, treasure if someone wants to take that instead. It's a skull with ruby eyes and a rainbow of gemstone teeth. Kind of like your skull already. <laughs> or I guess take the skull. Yeah, take it. Uh, you might it might be interesting later. And if there are no obje other objections, then that's what we'll do. And. Okay, so with this, with all this said, I would like to turn your attention to the part of the character keeper for Hearthfire. It is beneath the heavy black line. It starts on line 61. Um, essentially, what we're going to do for Hearthfire is we're going to go around the table and just you tell me what you want to do and we'll take it in turn and, and everyone can do the different options. But the very last thing you'll do is store any extra money you have in the hoard which is an opportunity to tell us more about your character. Every time you store money for, in your hoard, we get to learn a little bit more about your backstory and kind of what makes you tick. Uh, but other things you might want to do, if you haven't already done so, some of you have, is establish a household. Um, obviously, healing your ruin would be really good. Um, carousing, uh, you can open up uh, you can open up equipment slots if you use some of those that might be worth doing getting new spells and skills or things you can do or new rituals and skills so there's a there's a list of options here we're going to take a 10 minute break so you all can read through the options carefully and decide what you want to do for hearth fire you can do multiple things um and but but you can't have any leftover money any money you have left over has to go into hoard after you meet your burdens um, you can have equipment, you can keep valuable equipment still, but if you have just like liquid treasure, like coins and jewels, those have to either be spent or go in hoard. So um, let's take 10, we'll come back, and that should give us enough time to, to do hearth fire. We might go a few minutes over, but we'll be okay. So let's do some hearth fire. I'm going to go around the table and just, uh, first of all, 
if everyone can meet their burdens and treasure, go ahead and erase that amount of treasure and then unmark your armor if you need to do that. And we'll start with Revel Worm Slayer. What would you like to do with your uh, Hearthfire? First thing is going to be using the household. Drop a ruin, get rid of acid burns. Let's talk about your household. What you? Where do you live? Um, so in the north quarter of Fort Duran, also called the Numb Quarter, I believe, there mm. is a... Um, there are a lot of abandoned temples or... Um, to old gods and places that are, are lacking in worship. And Revel managed to make an arrangement with um, a woman who is currently restoring a temple to Bakanoff. Mm. Um, and so he has a room on the second story in the west wing of the temple of Bakanoff that overlooks the keep, or not overlooks, but has a, a decent view of the keep um, of Fort Durin itself. I love it. Um... You get to clear any conditions you wish and lower your ruin by one. And you also get to define a memento for your space from the adventure. What do you keep from the adventure? It could be something that was implied too, not necessarily something we saw. Ooh. Um, you can also ask one of us to provide. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to suggestions here because folks are better at doing that than I am. Um, I have an idea. Go for it. A bit of the sack that Brother Dirk was in. Mm, that's pretty good. Yeah. I was also thinking like a green. Actually, I was kind of thinking um, his maybe like if he had like a holy necklace, like a. Um, oh, you have his discarded holy symbol. Yeah, but that's it's like good. green and tarnished Yeah. because um, the witch's favorite color is green. Um, yeah. yeah, maybe I'll do that. Like his his tarnished Brother Dirk's tarnished um, holy necklace, holy symbol necklace. Something nice. like that. I'll figure out how to word it. I love it. It's great. Horror guest, what do you want to do for Hearthfire? So I've 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 basically invested some of my money into keeping the giant necklace as a piece of armor, like a bandolier. <laughs> so I'm Very keeping good. my movable wealth on. <laughs> Very good. But Very I've good. got just enough to meet my burdens. Um, and um, so I'm not keeping my gold, but um, because I basically yeah have to you know, keep on my um my kind of treasure hunting grind set and never actually make any money. So, I know. Do you, well, you have like do you is, do I see that you have no hoard? <laughs> yeah. I, I basically like reset it a few times because I've decided oh, that's right. best never yeah. gets to have yeah. anything. Yeah. Um but basically I mean I have quite a lot of like stuff in I in equipment now. So if I needed to do the hoard I could but and and I and I'd like to ask other people what I I would get from the adventure, I think. For, oh, for, for a household? Yeah, for my household. Where do you live? I live in at the top of an abandoned tower in the scoundrel's quarter, kind mm. of open mm. to the elements. Who has an idea for horror guest? Vivian's handkerchief. That's oh, pretty nice. good. Yeah, or, good. or some token of from Vivian, but handkerchief is always... Maybe that's the chivalric you know, thing in me coming out, but... Yeah, I like it. Tris the quick footed. Um, yeah, I think I'm also giving it Horgus the dra dagger from the inn. Oh, okay, very good. Yeah, that's good. I mean, technically, only get one memento, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not it has no mechanical value, so as many, it's really not that big a deal. Uh, let's click over to Tris the quick footed. What would you like to do first for Hearthfire? Um, I think. Uh, I'm gonna uh, do some healing. Very good. Do you want one of the freebies, or do you want to spend money? Um, I'll uh, think I'll uh, first. I'll spend some money. Okay. Just basically, yes. Where, where is the healing? Oh, you still, you do have two freebies. Yeah. How much are you spending? Um, I think I'm spending two gold. No, one gold. Yeah, so I, I'm paying eight to meet my burdens, so I have two left, and I'm spending okay. one. Okay. Very good. So you can lower your ruin by one. Let's go to Alina. Alina, our our fresh character for Hearthfire. What would you like to do? Um. Well, set up a household is probably the first thing. Increase your burdens by one. Uh, lower your ruin by one, and clear any conditions as you wish. And tell us what kind of structure or environment is your household. I think that she's managed to get this little like 
like basically a closet of a room in Amberette. And I imagine in the Rose District, there's like a, a rose maze thing, or maybe I read that in Bloom and forgot, and I think I'm making it up. I think that, I don't know, I'm into it though, go ahead. Yeah. And I think that like, it's this little like in a basement, there's no light except this like little slit window that she can just smell the roses through it and see the bottoms of the rose bushes. And it is really like indicative of her position in society where she's just like so close, but she can't partake in any of it. I like it. Um, now we each in this instance get to say a memento that you are bringing back from your time in Brandonsford and uh, this can be something that we literally saw in the story or something implied um, or just something that would be fun um, that has no direct bearing but is worth remembering salient who has an idea It was a bit ambiguous about what happened to the doppelganger, right? It was, yeah. I think that no one else saw this, but you have like the sort of partially returned to wood shriveled head of doppelganger Elena in, in is your memento. Oh, so doppelganger Elena's dead then. If 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 that's something that interests you. Or, or a limb or something like that or a, bit a of, hand or know, something a hand yeah. or whatever yeah. that actually fits some of our motifs as well throughout this adventure i'm gonna say um if this is not too weird uh i don't think it's like a prisoner captive thing it's more of a voluntary thing but i think I think one of the Nixies came with you. <laughs> like, I think they're just like tired of this Nixie life <laughs> and <laughs> they just hang out now <laughs> in, your, in your little closet. <laughs> I think it's kind of similar, but, and it's almost a condition maybe, but uh, then as a memento, but I think maybe um, as part of this group, like goblins are afraid of you in the mm. future like goblins avoid you what could be a thing that represents that like in the house like a physical yeah true decoration um, for the house maybe uh maybe some i think maybe like the maybe the worn out shoes of the goblin that we that that died oh you have you have gray lumps boots yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly gray lump, gray, poor gray lump. he's the only one we named too and now he's dead i feel like something from the black dragon maybe just like um a talon maybe of the the black dragon mm. you know that are like black dragon scales mm. yeah that'd be good I'll you choose one of the two. And that sounds great. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, and creature burdens and do all that other stuff and note that stuff. Let's go back around to Revel. Revel, what would you like to do next? Uh, I would like to take advantage of one of the healing narrations. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to narrate a scene showing how Revel uh, has his physical desire satisfied uh, upon returning to Fort Durin. Um, so we see, maybe shortly after this adventure, but we see Revel sabatons down, like walking through the muddy streets of Fort Durin, kids playing in the background. And a voice calls out to him from the side, Sir Knight, would you please join us? There's a brothel in Fort Durin that exclusively caters to people who have gone into the forest and returned. And it is the matron of this brothel from the second floor balcony calling out to him from the side. And Revel stops, and it's very clear that his hesitation is long enough that he has no interest in 
in acquiescing. And so she lowers her tone and drops the, the friendliness. And she says, I have something for you. So next time we see Revel, it's he's been standing in the foyer. Minutes have passed and the matron emerges from a door leading downstairs. And she says this way, but first, and she holds out a strip of gauze. She ties it around his head like it's a blindfold, but we can see um, still Revel's eyes through it. So it's not fully masking, it's not fully obscuring his vision. And she takes him by the wrist and leads him down the stairs. And what Revel sees through the doorway at the bottom is a court, very much like the one in the keeper, just like in any castle you would find across the, the kingdoms of man. There are courtiers, lords, ladies, four long tables with food from as far away as Nagane. A bard trio is playing to dancing couples. And in the back, there's a dais, a king and a queen of no import. And beside the lady are her maidens, one of whom looks very familiar to Revel. And Revel stops the threshold because he can't, he thinks he can't cross. But the matron, now in his eyes, wearing a courtly gown and royal red, tugs gently on his arm and whispers assurances, because none of this is real. We see outside of Revel's gauze that it's just an ordinary basement where you would store food. There's an empty table, chairs turned upside down. But the sconces have this sort of eerie pale blue fire coming out of them. And so Revel is finally drawn inside and his heart is racing at this point. His breath is, is deep and ragged because he's scared that the gash is going to take hold and undo him but it doesn't. And so she leads him inside and the, the lady in waiting, the one familiar to Revel, comes down and meets him about halfway and expresses all of these sentiments about, uh, we were so worried about you. You must tell me about uh, all of your, your uh, heroes and galore. And I heard you slayed a dragon. And she runs her hands over the scars from his acid burns, which haven't yet fully healed yet. Um, and she says, we were worried you were lost to the forest. And the conversation goes on. Maybe they dance for a while. This fake night plays on. And at some point she kisses his cheek and her hand moves to undo one of the buckles of his armor and he catches her wrist and her tone shift. And she says, they don't care. No one cares. And she sort of with a gesture looks around and there are other illusory couples that are maybe even doing their own little, they're trapped in their own little vignettes of kissing and locking arms and dancing and being quite lovey to one another. And then she says, but if you care so much about what they have, it, no interest in seeing anyways, let me take you to my chamber. And she leads him away. Upstairs. A golden coin from the old Calder is dropped on the matron's desk where she scoops it up and looks at it admiringly before pocketing it away. And she says, you know your man well. Everything happened as you said it will. Your knight will fight for us a little longer, I think. And we pan to what the matron is seeing. It is a crow, although maybe perhaps slightly large, even for a crow. And it has very emerald green eyes and it fluffs its feathers and tosses its head the way a crow might laugh. And then it flies away past the borders of Fort Durin into the empty space and then into where the old Calder forest begins at a, wit at a, at a river that they call Nevasque. Fantastic, thank you. Hargest, what would you like to do next for Hearthfire? Hargest has realized that since his fingertips have started becoming crystalline, he can attune himself to the stones that below Fort Durin without his trusty tuning fork now. And he, so he looks at it sadly. It's like, I think I got it. I got it in one of my first adventures. I stole it from a kitchen or something. And he looks at this battered old fork. And he goes to like the sort of um, tink, tinker or, you know, the sort of um, tinsmith. And he's like, I think you have more need of this than me, my friend. And I'm going to like sell it. And then with the money from that, 
I'm going to carouse and um, and uh, celebrate that I'm still alive since all I've done is sort of postponed my death for one more one more adventure. We have to name your tavern, your favorite tavern. Uh, you have to pick a player to give the adjective and another player to give the noun, and then you secretly reveal it in chat. <laughs> Can I do the thing that Jim, Jim's got this thing he does where he has like an adverb and an adjective and a noun, like the gently whatever. Oh, sure. You know, yeah. he, like, oh, he's got like one. an extra. Yeah. So yeah. everyone gets a word. Is that okay. the word? Is it, is it ad, adverb? Yeah, it is. Like the adverb. Uh, the one the one that's like like you know gently like it ends in l y right yeah 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 so I, I i'd like to give that one to to kevin and i'd like to give the the adjective to um to adrian and the noun to uh cassidy once you've all thought of your assigned word type it into chat and we'll see what the combined name of the end is <laughs> I've got mine. I think I'm ready. All right, hit hit enter. Let's see what we got. The fondly forsaken toad. Oh, I don't. Oh, oh, the oh, the one was shared privately. Okay, that's very good. The fondly forsaken toad. I like it. Um, great, great name. Go ahead and note that on your uh, carouse. Let's go over to Triss. Triss, what would you like to do next? Um, I think I'll be doing uh, going to the household as well. Very this good. household is the back room in the Dread Dag Dragon Inn mm -hmm. in a little village next to a large mountain. I think going back, I think Triss hasn't been there for a long time. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, there is a, a harpist court in the back uh, room. Um, there's a book on the harpist court. Um, there's some lingerie um, from Lady Holston. Oh, somewhere. Lady Holston. <laughs> My goodness, that's a blast from the past. Yeah. She's a, she's um, a trip. Uh, yeah, and I think that's where kind of like it has, I think it's quite some time later because it has taken Tris quite a while to get back there whenever you know, like that scene takes place, but I think it's like very, uh, it has been a long trip and he looks like someone who has been on the road for quite a long time and it's kind of slumps into a chair, kind of takes off the pack and kind of just closes his eyes and um, just sits there still for a while. I love it. Do you and then unpacks something. Yeah. Do you, you want somebody else to do it? Yes. What's the memento? Who, who's it going to be? Uh, let's say um, Kevin. A memento for your household? Yes. Um, um, I think you get a uh, I don't want to say the gong that they ring at the, the clumsy fox, but maybe like a um, just a beer stein. Maybe they have stylized beer steins uh, at the clumsy fox and it's got, you know, a fox motif either like playing across the for sure. uh, imagery. The clumsy fox is such an interesting name. I know it's not. I know, like this is just happenstance because Black Worm wasn't written for trophy. But the fox as a motif is like so closely associated with one of the big villains of the trophy setting, which is uh, Bright Eye or Bright Teeth. And so it kind of it's kind of interesting that like you would name a fox the clumsy fox in the trophy world, right? Like I feel like that's saying something, right? It's almost like insulting bright teeth, which I find really amusing. But uh, just one of those fun little uh, fun little uh, synchronicities, I guess, or happenstances. Um, okay, let's keep going. Uh, Alina, anything else you'd like to do for Hearthfire? Yeah, I think I'm gonna put the rest of it into the hoard. Where do you keep your hoard so no one can find it? Um, I think Alina keeps her hoard with her parents. I didn't really think about this, but I'm going to go with it. I think she keeps it with her parents. They're kind of getting on in years because she mm -hmm. was like, you know, they were kind of old when they had Alina. And she 
she just she loves them she trusts them and so they may not even know that she keeps gold there like whenever she visits she'll just like stash things <laughs> in different places in their house I love it and here's the uh the really interesting bit uh please narrate a flashback to the moment your drive became important to you um, I think it was while she was um, an inquisitor and there was someone that she was set to like interrogate and it was this frustratingly elusive man that she only knew as the piper that he was this leader of a group of people that just defied all sort of like logic and reason and lawfulness and everything that she like personally took it as like an offense that like how how dare you exist almost and so she started interrogating him and during this interrogation she completely fell under his like spell she became like smitten with this with this man and let him go you know covered it up but uh, either got sacked or or left being an inquisitor um obviously because of ineptitude <laughs> perceived ineptitude i guess and um then decided like from from that moment on she was like i i love him and i i want to be his follower and so she wants to get rid of the others, not only get rid of in an evil way, but like free them so that they can go back to their lives because like, you know, he's hers now. Oh, that's an interesting spin on the drive. Yeah. I'm sorry. Anything else? <laughs> mm -mm. Okay. No, that's good. Yeah. I like it. Okay. And how much are you storing? Just out of curiosity. How much did you... Okay. um five that's a lot okay that's good that's like one tenth of the way towards accomplishing your drive mm -hmm. um not bad for 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 one adventure let's go over to back over to revel um i would like to spend one gold i'm probably never going to see this much gold at the end of an incursion again so i feel like i should open up my my marked slot from yeah. all the way back in heart hums and darkness um but i i need to name the equipment, the shopkeeper, and come up yeah. with a secret. The yeah. name I can do, um, their name is Kid, but it's spelled K-Y-D-D-E. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have any good ideas for a secret. Mm. Um, so I'd love to workshop that to the table if there are any Good I like the, I mean, this is under the assumption that like someday in the future, Revel will have to follow up on this for Kid. Mm -hmm. And I personally kind of like the idea because I'm so mystery inclined. I kind of like the idea of, and also because I'm presently reading the King, King Killer Chronicles, I like the idea of Kid is like in disguise on the run from something. Absolutely. Yeah. I was also wondering if they were like, because Revel seems to have a way of like getting, of being in tune or being constantly thrown back into destiny with people who have been dismissed yeah. from court. So yeah, somebody who is, uh, we'll just leave it like in disguise. In disguise. Yeah. Like they're not really a shopkeep. Like, you know, just yeah. like, just like both in King Killer is not really a innkeeper, right? Like that's the spoilers for the first page of the King Killer Chronicles. Um, so, um, for anybody who's read them, um, awesome. Okay, good. do I mark the first box now, or is it every time here? I think it says every time here after. Hey, every time the they're box. after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, awesome. Fantastic. And you can move your uh, honey mead down into your found equipment, and then that, uh, and then that slot will be open for you. So, uh, let's go on to horror guest. I think I have to say what my like uh, when it says whenever I mark a. Uh, a, a goal i have to say what my my favorite meal is as well as getting like a a monster a, a rumor or a map or a named monster's weakness uh that's um, only the next time you do it so so it's the first time oh yeah and then the first unmarked box yeah mm, okay oh and that box is a box okay yeah i think i think um Horogast doesn't have anything left to do so he'll just be left 
sitting in the, the with this giant gold bandolier. <laughs> yeah, talking, talking to the, the skull with ruby eyes and a rainbow of gemstone teeth, and saying, "You get it, don't you, friend? Keep your your keep your valuables on you at all time." Horagus you know, is his own horror. With you, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm gonna be it's like, alas, skull. I I I didn't know who you were, but. You were obviously a man of taste, and he drinks his ale and tastes the taste of like the gemstones, sort of always growing in his throat, like cutting his tongue, and and the taste of blood. And he's like, "I will live long enough to see this curse lifted." <laughs> nice, I love it. Thank you, horror guest Tris. Anything else for Hearthfire? Uh, I think I'm gonna stash one remaining gold okay in the hoard um, so that puts you up to 13 or 14 now uh 14 14 yes pretty good pretty good um which box do you mark on your hoard choices mm. here i think um actually uh this might not be lasting long but i think the problem like in the place that uh tris returned to the dread dragon inn mm. i think uh the innkeeper has died that's what tris finds uh... out like the, the next day um but the young like maybe like uh like early 30s daughter uh, is there mm -hmm. and i think kind of tris gets uh romantically entangled oh, uh, with her and um so i'm gonna mark um narrative short scene in the present day showing how you're getting closer to achieving your drive um there is some money left it seems there um this is a well-running tavern um so i think for at least a couple of months uh, if not longer tris is kind of becomes the innkeeper here and kind of tries out this um Kind of you know like tries out this talking life. sweet yeah. yeah try talking yeah. sweet words to to that woman and um yeah and it. maybe then just leaving with some of the of her money at the end because i'm <laughs> taking two more gold for my hoard so yes oh you oh this is the one that lets you add two extra gold to your hoard that yeah, so it, that might be <laughs> signified that like after six months i think like tris just gonna make off with some of the valuables <laughs> very good very good all right, so your total hoard's up to 16 now. Not bad. Uh, Revel, anything else you want to do? Or actually, well, sorry, Alina, is there anything else you want to do? I, mean, I assume you're done with hoard, okay. Uh, Revel, anything else? Uh, I'm going to spend one gold to heal that last ruin to get me back to yeah. starting ruin. And then I think, uh, I think I'll think i hoard the rest. All right, what choice are you going to make for hoard? Um, I'm going to answer which sister have you dedicated yourself to? Seems appropriate with... Mm -hmm. what just happened um and how do you thank her for her help it feels a little on the nose but saint ara the torchbearer makes the most sense i feel like she's, she's um, the big she's the big one yeah, yeah she's the yeah dawn charity courage resolve and hope are her sort of domains and i feel like revel lives in most of those spaces as her uh her agent or needing her help a lot um and I think his amulet of protection, um, if we were to ever take a closer look at it, uh, is uh, in fact, oh wait, no, I don't have an amulet of protection. That's everybody else uh, that likes to take amulets of protection <laughs> from her. I don't know. Um, maybe I'll trade out the scale mail for, or the rusty steel shield for, um, for hers. Um, but uh, I think he does at least have an amulet. Maybe it will uh, become an amulet of protection. Um, that, uh, again, it feels kind of simple and on the nose, but uh, the ritual that he does to thank her uh, for her help is he just clutches it and uh, says a, a, a mantra-like prayer, um, kisses the amulet, and then touches it to his third eye um, or the space you know where the third eye would be. Um, and that's just sort of a thing that uh, our as followers do. It's sort of tied to the constellation um, idea, the eye of Ara. But I mm. think the the amulet itself also is a stylized eye. 
I like it. The next time you perform that little right on an incursion, you can clear a emotional or psychological condition. Fantastic. And how much are you storing in Horde? Six gold. All right. That's a good, good, good score. And I guess that's everybody then, right? Um, fantastic. We are a little over time, but uh, anybody who has to go can go. But I do want to go ahead and do Stars and Wishes. So uh, Stars and Wishes for the whole series, uh, and today specifically, but, but the whole series is fine as well. Um, whoever wants to go first, I'll, you all have been talking a while, so I'll go first. Um, stars, I, I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I've said it a few times now, it's not my normal style of adventure, but I actually quite enjoyed it. And I did get to do a little bit of my, uh, the horror stuff I like with, with the Witch of Navask, so that was really appreciated. And um, that moment was really good. Uh, so star to Cassidy for recommending that as a devil's bargain, which was well-timed. Um, but yeah, uh, we actually got a pretty complete story. We got to see most of the elements that were kind of introduced early. And so that was a lot of fun. And I thought these characters were great. Uh, star for, uh, star for Kevin, for how, how deep you went with Revel and like continuing that tale that started with, um, with the, with the bee incursion. And, um, that was a really good one. I don't even know if it's on a channel, but if it is, folks should go watch it. I think it's really good. And um, so yeah, star for that. Uh, I really um, I liked star for the uh, for like all of the for Adrian all of your like music problem solving in the series. That was a lot of fun. Your music based problem solving. Um, star for the goblins and horror guests. That whole pathos was really really enjoyable. The role play. I was super super into it. Um, and yeah, uh, Cassie star for the devil's bargain star for, uh, really kind of getting Alina in there right in the middle of the adventure, you know, kind of coming in late, but still sort of like, you know, being a full member of the party, uh, pretty quickly. That was all really great fun to see. And yeah, I, I wish, I hope we get to see these characters again in some form. I've seen three of them already multiple times. And so maybe we'll get to see Alina again in the future. Uh, you can always play any of these, you can play these characters in anything Trophy Gold I run in the future. You're welcome to, to bring them back if you get into one of my games. And, uh, but yeah, this is, this is, this is good fun. Uh, Star for the module. Um, it's, you know, uh, I'll talk about it more on my show, obviously, but I, I really, uh, it's, it's fun. It's a good, like, I think it's meant to be sort of like an introductory adventure to this kind of gaming, and I think it does a really good job at that. It it hits a lot of the big like kind of fantasy adventure gaming touchstones and highlights, uh, but does it in a way that um, it's a little more interesting than just your classic, you know, like rats in a cellar kind of thing. You know, it does have a thing in a cellar, but not rats. Uh, so yeah, it was, it, was, it was good fun. I really enjoyed the Black Worm of Brandon's for uh, those are my stars and wishes. I think the biggest star. I mean, like, like I think that that the the half fire, that was a surprisingly like like quite a, not surprisingly a very rich half fire, and I really enjoyed Revel's uh, episode. But um, there was quite a like a lot of really good like quite like deep role playing in this session for something that was quite sort of by as written quite light hearted and a lot of very clever solutions to things. Everyone had a very Ever solution and it was really good resourceful playing and everyone did a really like was very clever in their gaming also like the fake news dragon thing was just amazing like that was also kind of funny given given this was for fear of a black dragon like um it was but it was a good way to spend the tokens and it was a good it was a good justification for that and yeah i just I feel bad that I ended up as goblin enemy number one, um, but I kind of did that to myself. So I have nobody to blame but myself. But I apologize to goblin kind. I kind of didn't mean for that to happen. And I'm sure the goblins of Seeker's Rest will be very angry. But um, uh, yeah, it wasn't It wasn't my Argus's finest moment. So yeah, and my wish is just to play with you all again and see some of these characters again in future games. I'll also throw another star in uh, for, I really, um, 
I really loved the tone of what we were doing in these three sessions. There was, you know, it was, it was fairly lighthearted, but it had its moments of like a lot of gallows humor in places, um, a lot of, you know, the, the sort of like three's company mistaken identity stuff was really fun, like in different at different times, you know, it, it, that showed itself in different ways. Um, yeah, the tone, the, the mix of tones was really quite enjoyable, um, especially when it kind of was like, kind of just spiked with that little creepy stuff with Brother Dirk. Like that was all, that was all really good for me. I think it was great that um, we kind of like mostly stole stuff, I think, as a kind of a trickster thing. It was like, that was kind of the solution. Um, but then with the, then we also killed the, the dragon. <laughs> like that was kind of like an explosion of violence. Like everybody was like, getting in there and kind of like Alina was like uh, <laughs> that that was a, a great star like don't you all want to get out <laughs> and then we just know we just want to kill this thing so that was the one thing and the, but the other things we all solved mostly by like illusions and subterfuge and stealing and it was great um, yeah star oh we just lost uh Horror James, guest. We just James, had, James um, had to go. Yeah. He had to go. Uh, um, as I say, I I loved I, the whole goblin thing was just yes anding in everybody's direction. And like we just kind of wrote goblin law as we went along. Um, like every session was like, oh yes, goblins solve their problems by just beating each other up. Okay, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, they they have funerals by consuming each other's corpses. Sure, why not? Um, so yeah, star to the the yes ending in in everyone's direction, um, as we just kind of made the goblins up and goblin society up as we went along. Um and James was a, a, a large part of that. Um, so James, if you're watching this in the recording, um, star. Um, yeah, I loved the the Triss's using music as a hammer uh, and turning everything into a nail it was absolutely fantastic to just see like how we could continue making use of that. Um, the tonal the the tonal shifts were like very efficient in in a really neat way. We went from you know um, dark horror to, uh, we're trying to get these two hooked up. Um, oh, this session just had so many juicy, tragic bits in it. Um, that's like, you know, I said it in the chat, but like, it's 100% what I'm here for, um, from Vivian and horror guest, uh, to revels conversation with the witch and almost kind of fun how those two witchy conversations were very different from one another um and i loved that we got um both of them just absolutely eating it up the whole time um and jason star for your witch of nevesque um she's absolutely monstrous uh and delightfully so uh, an excellent counterpoint for revel um yeah my wish is that uh do i get to bring revel back for another one and she gets to torture him further um because that is uh what i find fun in the world um i was and, actually uh, quite happy i want to say i was actually quite happy that we got like a proper witch in the story because one of the things i actually really hate in horror fiction is or, I, or i'm tired of it i should say i don't hate it but i'm tired of it is like this idea that like oh you know like she's not a witch because historically they weren't really witches but now our horror fiction also there has to be like some symbology going on there's some reason why this you know they're not really witches uh that's why i like the movie uh, v V I T C H witch, uh, that, uh, Robert Eggers movie, because there, they were, they were witches. Like there was a witch, like there was no, you know, like it was not, there was no, like, there was no deeper meaning. And so I was really happy that like, yes, it was cute that Vivian was just a cute old lady and I'm, and that's fine. And, and yes, historically she might've been considered a witch in the real world, but I like that we had a witch too. <laughs> so I like that there yeah. was actually also a witch. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, my my wish, of course, is that we would have gotten more time to deal with Alina's doppelganger. Um, uh, I'm I'm happy with what we got. I would have been happy with more as well. Um, oh, I had and, a little thing to add. I, I forgot. I want to add to your memento, Alina, su to, to suggestive of what the hand is. The hand, the severed hand, is constantly changing shape into like different types of hands i think that'd be really good oh fantastic yeah. yeah sorry go ahead kevin no no um i i feel like i had more wishes but i'm i'm blanking on what they were i just really enjoyed today's session um particularly the the tragic um 
romance bits. It was, and also it was just really fun. Um, yeah, star to Cassidy. It's already been starred, but the the Devil's Bargain that brought the the witch in. Um, I always when when I run Trophy Gold, I have a lot of trouble directly tying back to people's drives. So um, watching other people do that is uh, is is just great inspiration for me. Um, yeah, so that was absolutely fantastic, and I love everything that came out of that. And it made the the hearth fire scene. Um, I had bits and pieces of that in my head, but um, it really made that like it cemented a couple of the holes that I had just kind of floating in my head. But I had a lot of really fun with that. Um. So my stars and wishes. First, I loved the reveal of how the one goblin died from the devil's bargain. That it like slowly became visible, and then it just stopped. I, I love that. Um, another star is um, I love how Triss was had his like Oprah moment of like you get a gold and you get a gold and you get a gold with all the goblins like just total like celebration. I I really enjoyed that and I really like how you said Adrian like he was like a trickster like he was very lighthearted but like like you said like we we were stealing and tricking and illusioning everything. And that was real. That was really fun. Um, I really liked. Um, um, oh man, I'm blanking on name. Horror guest. I literally liked when he said, "What's the best currency you can have? Being alive." Like just berating these <laughs> these goblins. I thought that was a lot of fun. And I think um, I have a star for kind of the trophy book trophy advice where I think it's in the book somewhere where it, when it's talking about devil's bargains when it says like if you don't know what to do always go back to like the drives mm -hmm. and so I was I was like I don't know what to do so I was like okay what's his drive and looking at his drive and like the system carried me through that because I wasn't expecting it to be something like that awesome and so I feel like it was like the system supporting so that I could have a good devil's bargain so that then you guys could really take it and run with it. And that was really cool to see that the, that the rules and the advice in those rules, I was really I wrote supporting that, I wrote that part in. So I'm really happy it worked. <laughs> yeah. Worked yeah. That is a part that I specifically wrote into the text. So well, yeah. star for you as the writer of that. No, I, I'm really happy it came through. was yeah. good. And a big star. Well, I mean, this is, a star slash slash wish is like I I am here for Revel's character arc. I am I loved being able to see that snippet of this little part of like his story, but now I'm like I need I need to see the hearts hum, the the warm and pleasant hum. I need to see what happens next. I want to know what happens. Like it needs to happen. <laughs> we have to just have to get him back for more adventures. Um, fantastic. We I have we're gonna have to go pretty quick, but uh, that was a really fabulous session. Uh, Adrian had to run, um, but uh, if we have any other further stars and wishes, we can share them on Discord. If you're watching the video, we hope you enjoyed it, and I'm gonna go ahead and say goodbye to everybody watching the video.